Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. This is Overlanding Now, um, for now, because we're going to make a change to that. But that is completely besides the point. What I want to do today is walk you through every modification that we've done on our 2022 Ram Power Wagon Overland build. If you've been around on the channel for a while, then you will have probably seen our last video where we were out in Sedona. It was really the only video I made on that trip. And that's because I was just enjoying time with my family. Sometimes the thing I'm talking to right now can greatly distract from the experiences that we have. And quite honestly, I don't do those things for this. This is kind of a byproduct of those experiences. Um, and I choose to bring you along because hopefully it's inspirational and you want to take your family out and do those things as well. But all that to the side, um, if you haven't seen the video, I'll put it up in the corner so you can click on that and go give it a watch, get to see this thing in action because I was extremely surprised with how nimble such a large vehicle can actually be. Um, so what I wanna do is walk you through all that and kind of show you what I've done that's made this vehicle capable for us or at least what we want for it. I have done an entire custom drawer system set up in the back. I'm gonna show you guys that today, but I'm not gonna talk through that today. That is gonna be in a separate video probably in the coming weeks, um, just because there's a lot still that I need to do and I have to take some stuff apart to really show you guys exactly what I did and, and how it's working. I, I love it. Um, I love the fact that I have 20 gallons of water and all of that, but um, there are some things I wish I would have done differently and that's that's what this is all about, just kind of learning together. If you guys follow us on Instagram and you've seen this Native Nomads thing, I would love for you to come along with us on the Native, Native Nomads photo Instagram and I'll put that somewhere as well. So you can go check that out if you're into photography, landscape photography, storm chasing, um, all of those things that we do here. It would be cool to have you over there and be a part of that as well. So all of that to the Side, I will do my best to put every single link to everything I've purchased for this vehicle in the description. Um, some of those will be affiliate links where we will receive a small commission for purchase. Others will be links just to the site the company has for those specific products so you can do the things that you want to do um, to your power wagon if necessary. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start up front and we're gonna work our way around the entire vehicle. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit as I go uh, and hopefully give you guys um, the answers to all of the questions that I've been asked via Instagram and via the comments um, over the last couple of videos that we've did. So stay tuned. All right, so I have decided not to move the camera around, and that's because Cohen and his friends are enjoying their summertime, ripping around on four-wheelers and dirt bikes behind me, and I feel like I have a very finite amount of time to get this video in without pausing their summertime fun. So what we'll talk about first is the rigid side shooter lights that I have on the A-pillar. Now, those A-pillar lights are also bracketed to rigid a pillar brackets that are specific to the Ram Power Wagon. Um, you can find them on Rigid's website. You can also probably find them on Amazon. I will try to put those links in the description. But those lights, the Rigid lights, is something I've always gone with. I've used Rigid on every single vehicle. Um, they're not the most inexpensive. I did use Nylite originally on this vehicle, um, but they were just so big, I didn't like them. I just like a sleek, slim design. I know that they are um, not the cheapest in the world, but they do provide great lighting. Um, and I only really use those if I'm driving down super dark roads. And if I'm driving down super dark roads and there's any type of wildlife that can come across, that's when I use them the most. I use them for more driving on pavement than I do driving off road, but they are extremely useful. So if you're looking for a set of um, rock solid, a pillar lights, those are the ones I went with and I would recommend rigid. I don't get paid to say that, but I feel like it's beneficial for you to know, you know, what other people use underneath to control all of our lights. Um, what I use is the trigger six shooter and I have a video on the install of the trigger six shooter that I'll put up in the corner. So if you're interested in how that works, it's a super easy design. It has a Bluetooth remote. It's not expensive at all. Um, and it's a, a way for you to control up to six items in your vehicle. And it has various amperages that you can control. So compressors, refrigerators, lights, light bars, um, anything that you wanna control through that system is, is easy to do. And the trigger system is something I also use in our Subaru Outback Wilderness. Um, I'm gonna be making a change there just because I wanna try something new and see how well it works. But the trigger system is rock solid. We've been using it for years and I would recommend anybody who's trying to save a little bit of money to maybe 
purchase some additional more expensive items, that would be a good way to do so, um, is just get a trigger system to control all of your auxiliary components. Now, just above that, if we go on top of the cab of the truck, so again, I have always used Rhino rack mounts. I'm not saying they're the best, it's just what I've always used. I've always used the Pioneer platform for my wife's JL. I used this same exact rack for my Jeep Gladiator. Um, and when it was time to make a choice for the Power Wagon, and I already had the one off of the Gladiator, I just decided to go with the Rhino rack um, Pioneer platform system. A, I had it, but B, even if I didn't have it, I would have bought it again because it's just always worked really well for us. Front Runner has an awesome slimline look too, and that was my biggest thing is I wanted a slimline look. Now, the feet for the Power Wagon, you do have to drill through your the, the roof of your vehicle if you want to use this rack. Uh, I would not necessarily recommend that unless you're fully committed to it, just because, I mean, at that point, you're gonna have holes. And I did miss drill once and I had to readjust, so I have an additional hole in there that I had to use a lap sealant for like RVs to cover up, but it has not allowed in any water. The lap sealant works really well, but if you want to use this Pioneer system on the roof of your power wagon, you will need to drill through it. And I will put the, uh, the legs that I'm using, I believe they're RLT 600 is what you can find on Rhino Rack's website. And those are the feet that you're gonna need to fit to the Pioneer platform system that will then be drilled to the truck. So it's not a huge project, but it is something that you're gonna have to think about um, because you're putting holes in the roof of your vehicle and you can't really undo that because it goes right into the frame. Now, on top of the Rhino Rack, what we have is a 95 liter, I believe, 95 liter Rome Adventure case. And that has been kind of, that, that started on the Gladiator, that moved to the Teardrop trailer. Now it's on the top of the, um, the Power Wagon. I've just, you know, a lot of times what I do, and this is what I would recommend to people, if you do change vehicles, a lot of the stuff that you have for one vehicle, you can use for another vehicle. And I try to repurpose all this stuff because the Rome Adventure Boxes are not cheap. And a lot of people are gonna say, why would you spend that much on a piece of plastic? And I totally agree, I think it's stupid, but I did it anyways, and I've had a great experience with it. The struts are solid, the clasps are solid, the rubber around the interior of the lid, when you shut it and it seals it, no water gets in. I mean, we went chasing severe weather storms in this power wagon and we were getting hammered by rain and the box is completely dry. So although it's expensive, I mean, I just think it's, it, you kind of get what you pay for in that respect. You could definitely put a cheaper box up there, but we have um, the Rome Adventure case. Now what we did to mount it, we do not have the mounts for the Rome Adventure cases. I just drilled through it. Um, and then I put a screw and a bolt, a nut and a bolt and put it in the T-slot clamped it down, uh, sealed around it with some silicone, and once again, it's never leaked. So it's just another option for you if you want to kind of DIY some of the stuff yourself. You are gonna have to make modifications for it to fit your vehicle specifically perfect every single time. That's something that I've learned is you just kind of have to roll with it. Now next to the Rome Adventure case, we do have a pair of Max Trax Mark IIs, I believe. And I use Max, Tra Max Trax for this large of a vehicle just because I believe that they're the most durable, they're the most sturdy. And if I need to get out of a situation and I'm using a much cheaper version of a Max Track from Amazon, well, then the likelihood of them breaking, bending, or not allow getting me out of the situation I'm in could be relatively high. And that's the last thing I want is to be in that type of situation. Now, the mounts that I'm using for the Max Tracks are the Rhino Rack Max Tracks mounts. Again, Rhino Rack is a common theme here. It's something you'll hear from me a lot, but I've had them on several vehicles. I've had them in different orientations. I've used them in many different ways and they've held up to it all and they still work today after three years of abuse. So that's what I say about Rhino Rack's products as a whole is I've had products from them for years and I switched them throughout my vehicles and they still work. Next to that, what we have is we have the Yakima seven gallon road shower. Um, I also have a water port, but it's much smaller. It's only three gallons, three and a half gallons. The road shower from Yakima is seven gallons. So it's big, it's pressurized. You can pressurize it up to about 80 PSI. You can drive with it pressurized. And it is all, I believe it's aluminum. I wanna say it's aluminum or it's steel. I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. But it's more durable than that really heavy duty plastic from Waterport, in my opinion. And more importantly, I just needed more water. 
that's for showers, washing dishes. If our 20 gallon tank in the back runs out, we do have that as an option to use, but mostly we use it for showers because it heats up in the daytime. That water's nice and warm. We can give Remy a bath. We can take a shower. We can do a lot with that really warm water once we get to camp at night. And after hours and hours and hours on the trail, especially in the hot desert, you're sweating, you're nasty. And before you go to bed, you might want to spray off. That's what we use it for. Um, beside that, what we have is the um, Crazy Beaver Shovel. Crazy Beaver is a shovel I've had for a long time. Again, it's been out in the elements, it's been in the desert, it's been through storms, and it's always been on the roof rack. And it hasn't chipped, it hasn't faded, it hasn't rusted. It's a fantastic shovel. Yes, they're more pricey. They look kind of cool though, so I guess you're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit of money to have a better look, but um, using it is awesome. I just spray it off when I'm done, clean it up, put it back, and it looks like I've never used it, quite honestly. And underneath that, what we have is the Casey Highlights. I don't know the exact name. I will put the link in the description of them, but they're just side shooter lights that we have on Rhino Rack mounts for side shooter lights. And I have that wired through the top of the platform system. So it's kind of hidden, but you can see it a little bit, unfortunately, from the downside, because when you look up, it, that truck's still pretty tall, so you could kind of see straight up into it. But that's what we use for any type of side lighting when we're at camp or again on a dark road and we're trying to like navigate through um, a terrain that we're just unfamiliar with. We can turn those on, have lights, and turn them off when we're done. So I don't use a lot of KC, not for any particular reason. It's just they're extremely expensive. And if I could find a better option for cheaper, that's what I'm going to do. But in this instance, they're the best, they're the lowest profile light that I could find that puts off the amount of light that I was um, interested in. So that being said, that's, that's what we went with there. Now, moving on to the back is where things start to get a little bit tricky, I guess. Um, what we have is the Evo A Smart Cap. I believe it's the Evo A. It's the one with the windows, and you can tell that because you're probably looking at it right now. And the Smart Cap has, is a staple for me in a truck. I don't care what truck I have in the future, the smart cap is the way I'm gonna go. It's just the most rigid, durable, best looking cap for a vehicle or for a truck in my opinion. Now, it is all weather sealed. Um, I did have to drill through my smart cap in order to attach it to my bed rails in order for my interior system, my drawer system to work, and it's held up just fine. That thing is a tank. If you're looking for a cap, I would highly suggest you look at smart cap. They are absolutely the most expensive, but in this circumstance, you get exactly what you pay for. On top of the RSI smart cap, I have front runner load bars. Now, what you're gonna need to do, cause I don't remember the exact attachments, you're gonna need to email or call front runner, tell them the cap that you have, they know the channel size, they will send you an email with an invoice that has the exact feet that slide directly into those channels and the load bars go right on top. I believe I have the 48 inch load bars um, and that is just enough to be as wide as the truck and I can put my eye camper right on top of them and I can have my tent connected and ready to go in a matter of 10 minutes as long as I have somebody strong enough to pick it up with me. So the front runner, you can get RSI smart cap load bars. I chose to stick with front runner because once again, all of a lot of this stuff, those specifically came from my gladiator and I just wanted to reuse them and repurpose them directly onto the power wagon. Now, a new addition for us, something that we've never done before is the Overland Vehicle Systems 270 driver side awning. Now, the reason I say driver side is because if you get a passenger side, it opens on the passenger side. If you get a driver side, it opens on the driver side. Um, now, we want it opened on the driver side because our tent opens to passenger. So there's some things that you're gonna have to consider if you don't know the exact layout of your rig and how it's going to be long term, then I would kind of get used to that and figure out what you want before you make a decision on the awning. You would hate to have an awning dictate how your tent opens, um, but for us, we open passenger so our awning is on the right side and it's a 270 awning that is extremely strong. I was so skeptical of this until my buddy Matt came over in his FJ and it was super windy out and he was you know telling me 
basically selling me for Overland Vehicle Systems and he gets nothing for this, but he was telling me how good of an awning it is and how durable it is in wind. It was super windy at my house. We were installing the Subaru lift. We opened it up and the wind was just ripping through this awning. And I was like, that is incredible. So what we did is we bought the 270 Overland Vehicle Systems awning um, and we bought it right off Amazon. So I'll put the link in the description for that if you're looking for a rock solid 270 awning um, and you know, you're, you want a little bit of shade in those desert days. Now, in the back, we have um, the complete drawer system. Now, the complete drawer system was made all out of three-quarter Baltic birch plywood. Um, the top side was made out of half-inch Baltic birch plywood. All of the supports and the bed system was all made out of 80-20 aluminum, and as well as the battery system and the water system uh, compartment was also made out of 80-20 aluminum. And that's really all I'm going to say about that. The, the, slides, the slides are full length, so they slide all the way out. They give us ample storage. They allow us to have a complete cook space. It has been really awesome to have. I have a water pump and a pressurized system on there, so I have really good pressurized water while I'm out there in the middle of nowhere. And that's something that is definitely a luxury by all means, but it does make things really nice to wash your dishes and just to have pressurized water or an onboard water pump to push your water around for you. The two batteries we have net out to about two and a half kilowatts of power. And like I said, I'll go over all of that in a separate video because it's a lot to talk through, but it provides us power for days and days and days. And what I have is a NOCO 5 Genius, NOCO Genius 5 um, charger that I plug into the vehicle and I have attached to the batteries. So anytime I'm driving, it is sending a small amount of amperage to those batteries, which is kind of keeping them topped off. Off. I definitely go below what I'm bringing in, but it's nice to always have some type of trickle charge on those batteries. It's only a five amp charger, but it definitely helps out. Also, um, we have a 100 watt rock pal solar panel that we can plug right into the battery system as well. So there's a lot of moving pieces in this vehicle. Um, there's a lot of information that I'm, I'm hoping that I kind of covered, but there, there's purposes and there's ideas for everything that we've done. This vehicle was the most thought out vehicle we've ever built because we've had so many vehicles in the past. We know what we want, we know what we don't want, and the decision was made to spend the extra money to make this exactly how we want it so we don't have to buy any more vehicles. At least that's my wife's hope. Um, that all depends on the day of the week and if and if I can get a good deal. But if you guys have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I hope this video was helpful for you. I know it was kind of fast. I was zooming through it a little bit. So if you need to rewatch any sections, please feel free to do so. Leave a comment and let us know um, if this vehicle would be something you would ever consider using. It, I know it's really big. It's really big on tight trails, but it provides you so much that I just don't think people understand about the Ram Power Wagon and the interior space, the comfort of this vehicle is just unbelievable. So um, with all that said, oh crap, the wheels and tires, sorry. So we went with the AEV Salta wheels with the BFG KM3 uh, 37 inch tires. Uh, that's, that's it, no suspension upgrades. We haven't changed the suspension whatsoever. So full circle, bring that back. I apologize. Um, I was just about to end the video, but I realized I had forgotten that. So again, any questions, please let us know. Um, give us a follow over on Overlanding Now or Native Nomads Photo on Instagram. Come along for a more day-to-day -day type of adventure, and uh, we will see you guys on the next one.